So today we are going to be talking about all the changes that have been occurring recently. The past couple of days and weeks have been kind of a roller coaster of emotions and um, yeah, everything that has been happening is all over the place. When we look at the points, when we look at the rules changes GW decided to go for, when we look at the base rule set about the indexes or indices, there is so much to take in, so much to understand, so much to learn and so many changes that a lot of people have perceived as negative. And I had to take a day off yesterday and just play a couple of games of Wema 40k 10th edition. I also sat down with friends, played some tabletop RPGs just to wind down because I think the first knee-jerk reaction for such a big change as the points changes and how GW is going to handle 10th edition going forward wouldn't have been the right approach. So instead, I'm here now. I have had time to think about everything. I had time to read through the Minotaur Field Manual, through most of the indices I understand the rules i actually played the game now which is kind of big and yeah we are here today to talk about that and if you enjoy the content please consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing as well as checking the links down in the description below if you want to support me in any shape or form be it patreon be it ko-fi um or just following me over on twitter or joining our discord server because that is free so yeah if you want to support me that is where you can do that and yeah other than that i hope we are going to have some constructive discussions here constructive criticism and yeah my name is Zplash and this is Empire of War Games so after the longest intro of all time we are going to talk a little bit about our favorite game Warhammer 40,000 all the changes that have occurred in the past 24 hours but also when it comes to the indices and so on because as you know i'm all on my own i don't have anyone writing my scripts i don't have anyone helping me out with editing or anything so whenever i'm dishing out three videos in the middle of a week that means that i'm basically spending 100 of my free time for warhammer and whenever i do that i don't do that because i want to get kind of views i don't make a lot of money with this channel i do that because i actually love the game i love the setting um and i really enjoy the lore and so on and you know whenever i criticize the game i try to be respectful i try to bring up ideas of my own and i try to make things you know see them kind of as level-headed as possible and that was not possible yesterday i was quite angry yesterday whenever i read the documents whenever i looked at everything and whenever i just wrote my first knee-jerk reactions over on uh, the Empire of War Games Discord server, I was very mad. So why is that? First of all, we as players are spending hundreds, if not thousands of hours building lists, painting models, assembling them, talking about the law, reading books. We are investing a ton of time and money into this hobby. And there needs to be some kind of respect that we get back. We get good models for our money and, you know, what you get out of painting and so on is your deal. But the rules and the time you spend learning them, because that is a huge deal for a lot of players. A lot of players just see a 400 page book, which the 10th edition book is, and they are just giving up mentally then and there. And there needs to be some kind of respect from the designers and from the rules team for you as the player to look at the rules and think, yes, this was deliberately designed someone actually thought about what is happening here the points make sense at first glance we need to test them obviously not everything is going to be 100 right but i have the feeling someone truly thought about what is going on here and ever since reading the indexes all the kind of mistakes that were in there all this stuff missing um just flat out images that are that were photoshopped which looks like automatically kind of in I don't know who did it, but you can look at the picture on the screen. Look at the image. What, what is going on? There's no attention to detail here. There's no care for attention to detail. And no one is looking at the small things. Whenever I look at the video game and I study video game design, detail is something that people appreciate the most. Whenever you see environmental storytelling, there is a skeleton doing something. And you can see what that person was doing before they died in Fallout. That is something big that happens a lot there. Those details are something people truly appreciate. Not everyone. But you have Reddits for that. You have entire Reddits of people who are just sitting down there and say, that is damn good environmental storytelling or those are great details. And that is what makes the game truly special. It is good on its own, but details are what make or break it for me. 
And it could be the same, and it should be the same for something like Warhammer 40,000. Warhammer 40k is a game that is so intricate, people spend so much time in it, that paying attention to those details is going to pay dividends, no matter if you are a um, miniatures first company and rules second. Because if your rules slap, if your rules show that you care, people are going to recommend the game to others. People are going to ask friends to play with them. And people are going to buy more miniatures as a result. And I'm not getting that from anything that we had released over the past few months. Some indices are good, but they are not good because they're super creative or anything. The Necron Index is good because the synergies are very strong and the numbers are high and their points are low. That is why that index is strong. Meanwhile, if you look at the Adeptus Mechanicus, Leaks of Wotan or um, Death Guard, there are no synergies there, which is already dumb. And then you're paying a ton of points for everything. And yeah, you're not getting anything in return except for nerfs. I don't know what the idea here was. Were there separate designers that where they said, you know, Joe, you're designing those five factions. Uh, Robin, you're designing those five factions. And, and Tim, you're designing those five factions. And they never looked at each other's work and just said, we are going to throw it together and it's going to somehow work. We worked together for 15 years and it's definitely going to work because that's what it seems like. There is no care to look over the other's rules. Um, it seems like the designers for the indexes or the indices and the points as well are completely separate. There is no unifying thing about them. The points are all over the place um, between factions, not within the faction. Within the faction, you can see that the designers somewhat try to balance it. But when you compare factions, it makes no sense at all. And the same applies to indices where the rules power is completely different. So... That is the first impression I'm getting. There's there's a lack of detail, there's a lack of unity, there's a lack of, it seems, communication between the people who are writing the rules. That is something that has been bothering me immensely. And secondly, there is just a lack of attention to detail, there is a lack to provide a rules manual, um, rules in general, indices that are cohesive, that do not have weirdly photoshopped images, that do not have a ton of mistakes, and so on. As I said, just to reiterate, mistakes are going to happen inev inevitably. We are talking about humans here, people. They have real lives and so on. But at the same time, the number of mistakes we are seeing here is not something you usually see in most other books or publications. Especially if you look at what happened with previous editions and so on, it was never quite this bad. So I think they could have done better and I think it's realistic to expect them to do better in this regard. I have no idea what their time constraints were, realistically speaking, but as far as I know and the information I have currently says that they are starting to write a new edition approximately one year in to the previous edition. So after one year of 9th edition, after that roundabout, they started writing 10th edition. So it is fair to assume that they had approximately, you know, one and a half years to develop the entire system, to write all the texts and to write the indices. And I think this is quite a long time for everything, considering that you're working approximately, what, 40 hours a week with some weeks off and so on um, with a team of, I don't know how many people exactly, but between maybe five and eight people are on the 40k team. Um, and you could bring the AOS team in there as well. I'm fairly certain they have um, 40k knowledge as well. It is not going to be as well funded, but you can ask them for help or at least for feedback and so on. So I'm kind of dumbfounded why... We are getting what we are getting. Um, how they managed to blindside us with certain things that we said we didn't want as a community and they still just happened. And what is actually going on? I'm just, yeah, confused. We had rules commentary. There was a document with rules commentary. This one was good, actually helpful. I am no, I have no idea if this one is in a book, but if it's not, it feels like a weird decision. And then we have the entire points document. But I want to start from the very beginning. So how about we talk about 10th edition as a whole, as the rule set first. So one thing that is important to remind ourselves is that 9th edition was very, very complex. And new players had a rough time getting into the game. Trust me, I know, because I actually managed to introduce, you know, roughly 100 to 200 players to Warhammer 40k 9th edition over the past three years. So I explained the game to them. I talked about them uh, to just about the rules. 
I played test games with them. I played fully fledged 2000 games, uh, points games with them later on. And I know how difficult it is to get these people into a game like 9th edition. So they simplified the game. And there are a lot of positives here. Less stratagems, um, some phases that are just feel a little bit one-sided for certain factions have been kind of reduced to just shooting attacks and additional cool special abilities. And generally speaking, your entire army rule is a two-page spread and you have basically everything you need to know about your army on there. Furthermore, rules documents are free, at least the base ones, and most of the data cards have a better layout. They are not simplified, I would say, but they have a better layout, easier to understand, easier to look at the rules at first glance and understand them. And those are all positives. I'm not going to deny that. I really like those changes. I was very positive about 10th edition just a week ago or two. And I think a lot of these changes to the base rules have been thought over. They have been thought through. OC is a great rule. Objective control is amazing. I still feel they are not leveraging objective control to the point they could because most infantry, if not all infantry, literally having an OC between one and two is very restrictive for themselves as designers, I think. And they could have gone a little bit more nuts when it comes to that. There are a couple of infantry models like uh, Custodes, I think, that have a little bit more, but, you know, that is simply because they run so few models. But when it comes to more elite armies, most of them still have OC2 space marines in comparison to um, Tyranids who have Horde. There's, those are the differentiators there. But I still think they could have left themselves a little bit more leeway with OC. But generally speaking, the core of the 10th edition rules looks good to me. Um, all the changes they've made, the simplifications that have been applied, looks decent. And a lot of people were positive. I remember Reddit threads where people were talking, okay, those are the stat lines, that is how a data card looks like. Everyone was quite positive. The data card layout, everyone was happy about. Uh, the base rules from what we've seen, everyone was happy about, and so on. Fast forward to the first faction focus releasing, and there were a couple of positive ones and a couple of negative ones. But we were lacking context, so we were just making those faction focus videos um, because they are fun. Just talking about things and talking about the game we love is fun. And that is why I uploaded those videos. We talked about them without any context. We didn't know anything at all about the army. We didn't know points. We didn't know any specific combos. All we got is the army rule, the detachment rule, I think, uh, two data cards and a stratagem. And we talked about it because it's fun. And fast forward again to indices and everything starts to crumble. Indices, you look at them and even with an untrained eye, you just scan through and you find a ton of mistakes. You find a ton of things that were just copy and pasted, uh, sometimes from other data cards and sometimes from 9th edition straight up. And it doesn't quite work that way in 10th edition, especially when we talk about movement and so on. And then you have indices that are just flat out from a power level standpoint or for a, from a just you know competitive standpoint, incredibly weaker than others. Like Space Marines, for example. Space Marines have their flexibility and so on, but it's on a completely different level. And here people are usually saying, especially some that are usually very positive about things and that are um, just happy to have a new edition and to be excited about the game, which is totally fine, by the way. You should be interested and happy about the game and positive. But you need to have some kind of realism setting in at least after a couple of days thinking about it. Because if you play Death Guard against other armies, and trust me, I did. I played two games of Death Guard yesterday. And you play them against Necrons and Eldar, which I did. You're going to get destroyed. And I played quite optimal lists, in my opinion, at least. I tried my absolute best to crush opponents and do the absolute best I could with Death Guard. And there is no chance for me to do anything that is super fun with the army or that makes me feel rewarded for playing them. The points discrepancy at the end of the game wasn't huge. I didn't get tabled on turn 2 or 3 and lost, I don't know, 10 to 90 or something. But even so, playing the army I lost quite... Like, my opponent had a lead um, that was significant. It wasn't just a couple of points. And I didn't have fun playing the army. And that, those are the two points that are most important to me. Um, having fun playing the game. At the end of the day, we are just you know shoving plastic miniatures around and we are saying my guy is shooting your guy and we hope that something cool is going to happen and if fun is not there then why bother playing 
this is a quote that Reggie Filiame said from Nintendo, and this is one of the truest quotes when it comes to um, just hobbies and fun and games in specific. And it is the core principle at which you should design your games. Competitiveness and people figuring out your rules for, for a competitive environment is going to come on its own. But when the fun is not there, why bother playing? And this is what happened with Death Guard. I played two games and I'm not going to stop playing them or anything, but consider this, I have eight or nine or ten armies at this point, fully playable. Uh, so I'm not stuck with them. But if you are a diehard Death Guard fan or Leaks of Wotan, if you invested highly into a new army, painted them, you are excited, you just feel betrayed. And that is the respect I was talking about earlier in the video. The designers, in my opinion, have a responsibility to design rules that are at least fun. They don't need to be strong. They don't need to be super kind of competitive. They need to be fun. And fun means they need to have a chance of winning. The interactions and synergy have to be evident and cool. And there needs to be some creativity poured into the rules of those armies. And most of the armies did not get that. Most of the armies are just generating some kind of counters, some kind of points that you're spending. What you're doing technically with most of the armies, if not 90% of them, is just generating some kind of some kind of resource and you're spending it somehow. And that is what differentiates your, most of your armies. You're just spending your resources slightly differently. And I think Warhammer 40,000 is such a complex game. It offers so much that you could go out and make incredibly nice and creative and complex rules that are easy to understand and easy to execute while being fun and flavorful. And as it stands right now, I'm very motivated to just write a index myself and kind of prove that because a lot of people are just talking a lot about, you know, what they hate and so on. And I would dare to say 99% of YouTubers who are criticizing most of the stuff usually don't bring any ideas of their own. Um, especially when we talk about indexes, I always try to give other ideas, other perspectives and give something back and not just say, you know what, the Death Guard Index kind of sucks, uh, the rules are not synergizing and do better GW. I usually bring other ideas in. How could they synergize? What are cooler ideas? How could you change the army rule, the det detachment rule to make it work? And that is something I wish more people would do. And we are seeing that on Reddit right now, people are trying to bring their fellow Warhammer 40,000 players to give feedback, to be uh, constructive, to bring up their own ideas and to kind of help out the designers a little bit. And when we look at the entire rule set for now, for 10th edition, there are positives, but there are also way too many negatives for it to be considered a good start to a new edition or an edition where everyone is excited to jump in. And that is something that is hampering the excitement about everything a lot because people in the at the end of the day just wanted to have rules that are somehow somewhat work indices and points um, numbers that reflect reality and that makes sense and they just wanted to have some fun playing no one wanted the strongest army people just wanted to have an army that works now fast forward to the 16th of june and the minotaur field manual arrives you are still excited your index might not be the best but, you know, you have cool rules. You're Adeptus Mechanicus. You, you have some kind of nukes you are throwing. It's funny. It's Mimi. You can play it. It's fine. You don't need to run your uh, Skitari. You have a lot of other options. You are not bound to play your battle line. Good. Then you look at the Minotaurum Field Manual and it's another kick in the teeth. For most factions. You look at Orcs and you have built your Stomper. You're excited to play that model and it costs 800 points. You are looking at Necrons. We've talked about the Monolith. Amazing de uh, data card, cool rules. People were excited to run them. You look at the points, and it costs almost 400 points. You look at the Silent King, the same. Huge models, people pour a lot of time into them. Um, their rules should be flashy, interesting. You, you should motivate people to run them. Don't make them too strong, but make them at least when it comes to the points, at, at least at the start of the edition, be a little bit more lenient and allow people to have fun. Explore things, and if it's too strong, nerf it. A little bit. Just take it slow. Uh, usually speaking, buffing things, when we talk strictly about game design, buffing things, making them too weak at the beginning, and later on improving them is better because your community is going to be more thankful for that. People are going to be more upbeat about those changes. But at the start of 
a new edition, at the start of a completely new thing where everyone is excited, you need to make a choice. And I think going for the conservative choice when it comes to points and uh, yeah, the option to just go all over the place with the points, which you, you've done as well, GW, is not the correct one. Allow your people to have fun. It is the start of the edition. Um, people who are throwing tournaments are doing so at their own risk. And I would, as a GW kind of Warhammer community website manager or something, I would talk to the people on the team and I would say, you know what? Recommend people three months at the start of the new edition. You shouldn't do any super competitive tournaments or any tournaments that earn you any kind of GT points or something. Let us explore this entire edition. Help us out a little bit with the points. Help us out a little bit about with the indices. And after three months approximately, we are going to bring out the first update and that is going to be competitive form of 40,000. Until then, everyone else can enjoy the game. You're even offering crusade rules in your core rule book. That is something positive. That's something great. Casual players have a lot to look forward to. Um, narrative players have a lot, to, a lot to look forward to. And it's great. And the rules don't need to be super optimized, obviously, but they still need to have fun. If you're going to a crusade campaign and you're losing every game, you're not having fun. So the argument that you're not caring about the rules as a casual player is incorrect. And then another thing to consider is that you blight sign it, your community, kind of, GW. And you said that, you know, power level is gone. has been done away with. 90%, if not more, I would dare say 99% of your community was playing with points rather than power level. And what you did with points is to offer power level in disguise. I've, I'm not sure what the idea here was. You, you technically gave us points, AOS-style points, for a game and a lot of kits and models that do not offer that support. If you design a completely new game, like Age of Sigmar, and you design the kits around that idea of you bring five or you bring ten models, and those are fixed loadouts, and those are fixed points depending on... Yeah, you know, you can just decide to bring 5 or 10. That works. For Age of Sigmar, it makes sense. The competitive community there is very positive. People are having fun. Uh, people are usually um, very upbeat and try to get as many people into Age of Sigmar as possible. And that is something you could you could strive for with 40k as well. I know 40k sells on its own and you technically don't need the best rules or anything, but there needs to be some kind of motivation here, right? And when you look at the points and power levels, that doesn't feel like that was the case. It feels like the points were randomized. You just threw some numbers on the wall and, you know, checked out what sticks. And what baffles me the most is that I'm reading all over the place that these rules are supposedly being tested. And if you look at the indices, the first glances we've seen, we've already seen combinations that are so devastating that they've been changed. Look at the Death Watch. Those were not tested. I, I am... 100% certain that you have barely tested any of these rules. And I'm not sure what happened here. It, I'm I'm going to just say that it's probably time constraints or just, you know, management not giving you enough resources, enough time, enough people. There has to be something here. Because I talked to Robin and I talked to um, Mr. Black and those people are motivated. Those people like the game. They love what they are doing. They know what they are doing. We talked about very intricate rules for 9th edition last year. And they were very knowledgeable people. And what I see here does not reflect my conversation with them. And I'm very confused what is going on, to be completely honest. I'm not sure what happened. Because the entire rule set, the base rule set, the, the core book or the core rules, feels like they were written by someone who's very proficient. And then the indices and the mentor field manual feel like they were written by either quickly someone from the team Maybe they pulled out someone from management and told them, you know, write points. Or they, it feels like it was written by an intern. I, for, for lack of a better example or word, it feels like it was written by an intern. And I don't know why. W why is that? Why doesn't anything feel tested? Why doesn't anything feel like it makes sense? There is no cohesion in anything. And I'm not sure what to tell you about this. For one, power level is something no one wanted. And for two, most of your kids don't even... Support that. Plague Marines come in kits of 7, but you can only run them in units of 5 to 10. Custodian Wardens come in boxes of 5, but you can only run them in units of 3 to 6. Your Impulsor can carry 6 models, but your Bladeguard Veterans come in units of 3 to 6. 
So the idea previously was I was excited. Yeah, you know, I bring five Blade Guard veterans and I attach a captain to them. What a cool combination. I can't do that. I need to pay a 33 points tax to bring five Blade Guard veterans because if you pay less than the max unit scored, you still pay the maximum. So you can bring five out of six, but you still pay for six. And then I need to attach a captain to that to bring that in an, impu in an impulsor. What is the idea here? What is fun? How am I supposed to feel excited about this? I, I sit here and I want to build cool lists. I want to be excited about the game and I want to have points. I want to, you know, talk about things with people. I want to be excited. That's why I made this YouTube channel. I want to share excitement. I want to talk about combat patrol. Talk with them about, you know, what are good combat patrols. Give constructive feedback. How could you improve them? How could you um, make enhancements a little bit more exciting for a combat patrol or for the game itself? And what I'm getting here is just demotivating, to be frank. And all in all, you know, from what I'm seeing here right now is that 40k 10th edition, besides the very core rule set, is not quite a playable game. I played two games. I played a weak faction against two supposedly strong factions. And I never felt like I had a chance. Gambits did not save me. And I'm going to play another two or three games today and another two or three games tomorrow. And I'm going to give feedback again at that point. But what I'm seeing so far and my first impressions are highly negative. And I don't know what else to say. There's just so much negative stuff to cover here that it's difficult to give targeted examples. You know what you did. You know you know that you did power level, but in disguise. You know that you, you've written some indices that just have no business being in the same game as another index. You know, just the three examples I give usually uh, Death Guard, Adeptus Mechanicus and Leaks of Wotan against, you know, the likes of Eldari and Necrons. I don't know what is going on. A perfectly balanced game is an illusion. That is what I always say in most of my videos. That doesn't exist. No one is asking for that. No one is asking for a very strong faction. What people are asking for is a cohesive faction with points that make sense. When I look at them, they make sense. And when I look at my index, I see synergies. I, I see a reason. I see intent behind those rules. And it is not happening here. Next up, let's talk about the casual argument. The fact that, you know, that is a, an argument that I see a lot, especially in the magic community. But there needs to be a differentiator here. The magic community, as you know, is a card game. And it's really easy to pick up. You pay, what, $10, $15 for a baseline standard deck. And you can play the game. That is all you need to do. And thus, the community over on Reddit or on social media is a tiny, tiny fraction of the entire community, especially the casual community for Magic the Gathering is huge. Warhammer 40k is nothing alike. They are both nerdy hobbies. They are both a niche. But Warhammer 40,000 requires you to invest and not just time, but knowledge and a lot more money, depending on, you know, even if you're a casual player, you're paying a ton of money, time, painting skills, research, and you're going to get interested in the lore you're playing the game because you like what you see and you're going to end up on social media because you want to see what are other people doing where can i get feedback how does it work do people have cool lists that i can learn about do people have cool videos where i can learn about competitive or where i can get tips for how to start a crusade campaign and people are going to end up on reddit the estimated player base for my 40,000, at least to my knowledge um, approximately a year or two ago was around 2 million to 3 million players and what you have over on Reddit, on the basic Wormer 40,000 subreddit, is 633,000 people. I think it is safe to assume that approximately one-fourth of the community is over on social media actively talking about the game. I think that is a very realistic expectation. And um, tons more people than in comparison to Magic the Gathering. And people are talking about what is going on. People are excited people are upset people are talking about points some people have said that the new point system they really like because they're a casual player and they don't like to think about it but even if you're the most positive the most relentlessly positive person out there you have to take everything with a drop of realism and look at the rules and consider that kids that ha have seven models that are only offered in units of five to ten cannot be the right decision no matter how positive you are so all I can say is that, you know, the community is not always right. If all video game developers, especially for competitive games, were listening to their community, the game would be a train wreck. But for Warhammer 40,000, you happen to have one of the most dedicated 
one of the most competent and mathematically gifted communities out there. If some League of Legends troll is saying, you know, my champion sucks, fix it, there's not much to that. But when you look at the Weimar competitive Reddit, when you look at the regular Weimar Reddit, and you get feedback there about rules, about points, about what is going on with their faction, you have faction-specific discords you can go to, you should make use of that. Evaluate that, reflect on it, and improve on it. And do it fast. In three months, ideally. Because as it stands, I think 10th edition is not fun to play. I mean, I guess it depends on the faction you're playing, but for most factions, it's just not fun to play. List building, something that was one of my favorite things about the hobby, has been completely changed and butchered. Building lists is super weird. Um, if you have um, now 2,050 points, you cannot just remove five weapons from your army and call it a day and be at 2,000 points. You have to remove an entire unit. You have to remove 100 points or whatever, depending on your army. And it is something that AOS is used to, but they have mechanics to remedy that. We do not in Warhammer 40,000. And it is very weird that the approach that you have chosen is the one you have chosen, because... <sighs> There is an optimal Adeptus Mechanicus list already over on a Warhammer community website. There is a literally optimal list that people have figured out and mathed out and tested already. I have no idea what is going on and I have no idea how to further give feedback for now because there's too much feedback to give. And thus, I ask you, if you're a GW employee or whatever, please check the dedicated Reddits, please check the Discords, read about things. You don't need to talk to people there. Just... That, that wouldn't make any sense, but just read about things, get inspired, get, you know, the same rush the community gets when they're excited about things. Whenever you see one person talk about a single model that they are very hyped about, that is the stuff that we want as a community. We don't want to sit here and think about, well, you know, my model is kind of nice and I, it's big and I spend a ton of money on it, but it costs 800 points now. That kind of sucks. I, I mean, I guess I still bring it because I have it, but it sucks. That is not the reaction you want, no matter what kind of company you are or what kind of designer you are. As I said, balance and perfect rules design and perfect design is an illusion. I don't ask you to perform miracles here. I ask you to, for now, take feedback from the indices, take feedback from the monitor field manual and act on it in a timely manner. Second, I would really like Whenever that happens, I don't think 11 edition is going to be it, but maybe for 12th, whenever you're going to make a big overhaul for rules, please do it properly next time. This feels rushed, and this feels like a ton of potential was wasted. You had so many options to make factions something different, something more interesting. And what you instead did is make factions different like Death Guard, but less fun, not about what their core idea was, and you're alienating that fan base for absolutely no reason. Someone on your design team had a power trip and said, Death Guard are not meant to be durable, they are meant to debuff opposing units, and they are meant to spread the plague. That was their opinion, and it feels like one person decided that, and that is that. No one else had anything to say about this, and that the Death Guard community just has to live with that decision now. And that is something I hate. That is something that should not be the case. You should design all of them as a team. You should give feedback. You should talk about it. And you should test them to the best of your ability. You're not going to have time to test every matchup, every combination, every unit hundreds of times. But at least make me feel like as a reader and as someone who appreciates good design that things have been tested enough or sufficiently enough that I can say, okay, you know what? That Those mistakes can happen. But it feels like there was an idea behind it, there was a clear intention behind it, and you tried your best. And it is something that I can appreciate and that most of the community is going to appreciate. No one in the community is asking any miracles. We are asking about cohesiveness, intent, and sense in what you're designing. Next up, we are going to be talking about the weapons and free war gear. We already talked exactly about the same thing when Space Marines got their free war gear. I gave explicit feedback when it comes to that war gear. I don't expect any GW designer to watch my content. I'm not that naive. I said it all the time. But I gave explicit content and I saw it, you know, over on Reddit and on other social media channels and being discussed by bigger YouTubers than I am. And there is a clear, easy thing to consider, okay? It is that if you 
give the unit a bolter and a plasma gun and both cost the same. I usually use Inceptors as an example. You need to give the player an incentive to bring the bolter. It doesn't need to be balanced and it doesn't need to be the same. But the bolter needs to have something going for it. Having a 100% decidedly clear winner when it comes to those options, especially if there are more of them, sucks. No one wants that. If you're making free war gear, spend the time, deal with the consequences, and make the weapons side grades, as to the best of your ability at least. If you don't, it feels lazy. Why are you at that point making war gear free? Do you not want war gear to have points? Is that a step that you wanted to skip? Um, did you want to... Uh, future-proof your game and say, you know, all future kids are just going to have one weapon loadout anyway, so why not start now? But that feels bad for people that play Tau, for example. Why would I bring a Flamer as a, as a Battlesuit player uh, who has Cyclic Ion Blasters that I could just strap on literally everything? What is the intention here? You cannot just imp like implement a system, change everything around, and not do anything else for it. That's like starting to build a house, but never bothering to build the fundament. It is going to crumble. And I have no idea wh why. You, If you implement a design, if you implement a, a decision, and if you do something as big as free war gear for literally everyone, you need to give side grades. You need to give up people an incentive to bring other things. You need to make people feel like the models they have already built are valid. And if you have built most of your captains, most of your lieutenants with bolt pistols instead of plasma, you're already screwed. If you assemble them with power swords compared to with, I don't know, power fists or something, you're already screwed. If you've built your tower um, units and you're new to the game or something and you did magnetize everything because that is frankly a ton of work and you need to paint everything and you need to magnetize it and store it correctly and you just build it with one of each weapon, like a... Um, a flamer, a cyclic iron blaster, and a regular, you know, six or four shot strength four bolt thingy. Um, that is something that they are getting punished for actively right now. Furthermore, you know, the boxes you're buying, seven uh, models in a box, but you can only build units of five to ten. You need to look at the death guard and say, okay, you can bring death guard in units of five and in units of seven and in units of ten. You need to make that extra effort to make people feel appreciated. And it is the attention to detail I was talking about. Yes, you're not going to have that exact granularity that you had previously, but granularity was all, all of 40k was list building and granularity when it comes to the basic game, the pre-game, the meta game was something that people appreciated about Warhammer 40,000 a lot more than they do about Age of Sigmar. Age of Sigmar has clear strengths. Age of Sigmar is an amazing game that I started playing, you know, a year or two ago. But list building is nothing I appreciate about the game. I appreciate about the game for its in-game rules and mechanics. Warmer 40k was a huge part of the meta game, how you build lists, how you discuss lists with people, and synergies, weapon options, loadouts, all those intricacies. Understand that a new player is going to be overwhelmed, but you know what? Just make it easier at that point. You know, just give them side grades. Tell them, you know, you like a bolter. In that case, you're going to be shooting better against hordes. A bolter, in this case, um, makes four shots instead of the one shot that is super hard hitting for the plasma weapon. Instead of what is currently, where you have a bolt pistol that is doing literally one shot that is just shitty, and a plasma pistol is doing one shot that is way better. I, I, what is the idea here? You, you're implementing a ton of designs, and it applies to indices as well, by the way, where you're implementing a design, but you're not thinking it through. And it happens all the time in 10th edition. And I would like to know why. I would really like to know why. Because it, it just doesn't feel thought through. So, yeah, what else is there to talk about? I, I want to actually take this segment of the video and talk about what people are talking about on Reddit and just take in some commentary and give these comments a little bit of a spotlight here. So the first thing I'm reading, power levels are now mandatory in 10th edition and why this left a sour taste in most people's mouths. And this is the blindsided thing I talked about. People are talking about that instead of proclaiming power level is dead because it's not, they should have started a dialogue about the removal of granularity in 40k. Discussion, dialogue, managing expectations is something you do as a content creator, you do as a company and you do as someone who's publishing products and releasing them. And if you're a designer, what you do is 
you work with expectations and you manage them and you kind of took yourself out of that responsibility. And that is something you can not do. People are going to be mad about it. And what you're seeing here on all those reddits from your community is exactly that. You reap what you sow. Next up is the comment that I've seen on the warm competitive Reddit. If you want Wargear to be free, Wargear has to be equally valuable. That is something I talked about earlier. People are not coming up with that idea and I didn't come up with that idea because it's revolutionary. It's something that makes sense. You sit down as a designer or as someone who's thinking about the game and you think to yourself, okay, I have a, a board here. I have everything noted down that I want to change about the edition. And then you have, it, it feels like it says, War gear is free. There is a tab or or a mind map which says there's a point up there that is kind of from the middle that says Warmer 40,000. And it says War gear is free. And it stops there. There are no additional points that go off of that that say War gear has to be side grades. How do we motivate people to bring maybe weaker options? How do we reward them for that? Do we give them special web, uh, rules? Do we give them, I don't know, maybe if they're carrying a, a lighter weapon, do we reward them for a little bit? extra movement, anything, ideas. Just think things further than you would usually do. Because there's a lot more to consider than just sitting down and saying, War Gear is free, let's fucking go, uh, calling it a day here. People are going to somehow figure out everything and, you know, that that's going to be fine as it is. No one's going to be angry, surely, and the consequences are going to be what they are. That, that, that cannot be what has been going through uh, the heads of the people over there. I, I am not sure how else to phrase that because, you know, it's been a lot <laughs> over the past couple of days and this is one of the things that has been probably bothering me the most. Especially considering a lot of people have already built a ton of models, a lot of people have already assembled their models with maybe not the optimal way. I personally, for example, play Silver Templars and Silver Templars are known for their swords and their mastery with power swords and almost all of my models have power swords. And I've never even really considered to equip them with power fists or thunder hammers and so on. And there are still rules for that and they are not terrible or anything. But if you're a purely competitive player, which I am not, I go to tournaments, but I also play crusade campaigns. I also just introduce people to the game. I think I'm the perfect in-between kind of player who's doing a little bit of everything. And if I wanted to go super competitive, I would be punished because I already assembled my models, I already painted them, and I didn't literally magnetize every single model in my army. For no reason. You're trying to enforce Age of Sigmar ideas and Age of Sigmar mentality to, to a game, and a game that has released kits and models that do not support that idea. Then we have the comment, had some friends play 10th edition earlier today, their review. Game is way more fun than it was in 9th edition. The matches aren't decided by turn 2 anymore. They've had to think way more about their actions and they think that the points feel appropriate. I don't know what the factions they played, but whatever it may be, that is their opinion. They had a blast and they were happy with the changes. Basically, they feel like the biggest issues of 9th edition were directly addressed and they had a great time. And that is exactly what you read throughout the board. That is something you want to read across every Reddit and across every Discord. Those two people seem to have been playing factions that seem to have, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe they were balanced against each other. Maybe those were just kind of fun lists of stuff they had running around. But the core idea here is that people were sitting down and having fun. They sat down and said, compared to 9th edition, I was enjoying myself more. And the core rules, as I said previously in the video, support that. The core rules are way better than they were in 9th edition. The game is simpler, easy to understand, and easier to execute. And it is something that people here have been appreciating. And it is something I'm going to read here as well. The entire video is more or less criticism, but I'm not just sitting here um, being blinded by hate or something and just saying, you know, everything sucks, hate everything. I can see positives. I have kind of that differentiator. I'm a regular human being with common sense. I, I know that the game is not perfect and no game is perfect and that this game has its positives and that you know, the core rule design is something really, really good about 10th edition, but everything else is not. Next up, we have the comment, Hunter Killer Missiles on everything now. With no incre incremental costs, why not? And that is exactly correct. With no incremental costs, everyone has a Hunter Killer Missile, no matter if you should bring it or not, because it's free. And then the first comment below that says, yes, free war gear means free war gear. Same reasons why every single Tau unit will be maxed out on drones. You're going to get minus one to wound on almost any um, Tau unit. 
you are going to have additional wounds you have to chew through. They are going to have additional shots and you are going to have to deal with that. Spamming Cyclic Iron Blasters is going to be very common for Tau and Tau are going to get mentioned a lot simply because they do have a ton of options. So yeah, that is something that is just weird. Hunter Killer Missiles for free makes no sense. They are one-shot weapons that can deal a ton of damage potentially and they should cost additional points. Them being free, in my opinion, makes no sense. And then we have one of the most mindful posts in the Warhammer Competitive Reddit. It says, new additions, mindset, and things to remember. As people begin analyzing the points for everything, finding under or overpriced units, and arguing about the concept of AOS-style free war gear pricing, here are some important things for newer players to remember from someone who has been through a number of editions. One, models are generally forever. Rules are temporary. While it is pretty ridiculous when GW invalidates a model, it is also mercifully rare. Armies are good for some years and bad for others. This is just the ebb and flow of the game like this and so many moving parts. The best approach is to always to paint and play the models you like as well and, you know, just deal with the tools you are given. And then, you know, creative ways to find and play your list. But that is something um, I personally disagree with because the designer should support what you do and you should not suffer for the army you pick, no matter which army you pick and no matter which models you play. You should always have at least a fighting chance to do anything in the game. But the rest is true. Your models are forever or for a very long time at least um, unless they get kind of revisions and so on and it's something to keep in mind especially as a new player even through all the anger and everything i said so far warmer 40k is still fun the hobby is still fun all of its aspects are great i'm still playing the game i'm still painting miniatures um but we are sharing criticism and we are sharing these videos thoughts articles reddit posts because we care about the game i would not be he sitting here for 50 minutes talking about the game if I didn't care. Especially considering I don't make almost I, I make almost no money off of these videos and off this channel in general. I do this because I love the game. And that is one of the most important things to consider. I may be a little bit heated. I may kind of use the wrong words at times, especially considering English is, you know, not my first language. But I try to be respectful, I try to be mindful, and I try to give real and helpful feedback and and just things to think about and that is something i i wish literally everyone would do and this poster uh the post of this reddit post is called clutter eater is exactly such a person which i always appreciate and the second point is or there models seem to be priced with leaders in mind it's hard to take into account the value of a squad or vehicle solely based on its data sheet. You need to consider what rules can interact with it, especially which units it can bodyguard, be buffed in by transports and so on. That is correct, especially if you look at units like High Marshal Helbrecht. If you remember, um, in 9th edition, that guy cost 160 points and was generally considered super underpriced and was very cheap for what he could deliver. Now High Marshal Helbrecht, somewhat similar to what he was before, costs 105 points incredibly cheap but it seems that gw's design in intention here was that you bring leaders and those kinds of units with almost every single unit you run and that is a cool way to go about the game it is different not everyone is going to like it but i can see the design intention here now my first knee-jerk reaction was hey 405 points are they high did, did they smoke something and if they did it had to be really damn good but now that i think about it it's a little bit better. Still, there is a lot of discrepancy between models that doesn't make sense. Helbrecht is way stronger than, mo than a lot of other leader choices, named leader choices, epic heroes in his point segment. For 105 points, you're going to have trouble finding someone who can keep up with this guy. And that is what bothers me. Not the general idea that you're going to be running leader choices and, and epic heroes with almost every squad. Number three, the game is updated pretty frequently this, these days and new editions always take a few updates before they start to dial in uh, on the value of units. In the old days when you got your codex, you would often be stuck waiting for years for any kind of update. I started Necrons playing in 4th edition or something like that and I had the 3rd edition Necron codex for a long, long time, for 4-5 years before the 5th edition one came around at some point. So I was playing with the th third edition codex for a very long time and I know exactly how that feels. Now we are sitting down and what you heard me say at the beginning is that I basically said, uh, you 
can expect a big update and a more competitive update, quote unquote, in three months. And I think that is realistic. That is something they said themselves, that there are going to be uh, somewhat big updates every uh, three months or so every quarter and um, even bigger updates every half a year or every year. So you can expect updates, balancing, um, people sitting down and thinking about this all the time. And that is something we, we have to appreciate and something that is great. But also, we should not super praise GW for it, but because they are just going with the times. Infinity, the uh, tabletop war game, is doing, has been doing that for years now. Um, other war games, Malifaux and so on, all of these games have all of that already, and they had all of that for, for a very, very long time. So GW is not doing some something super special for the community here. They are doing what we expect them to do. This is the minimum. To update the game, keep it interesting, keep it balanced. But still, you know, if your army sucks now, you can expect it to be at least a little bit better in three months. And that is something very positive. That is something that can give you hope. And all the people that are, for example, saying, I'm shelving my Death Guard because they suck now. Um, this is the kind of reaction that I think a five-year-old would have. And most of these people over on Reddit and so on are 30 to 40. Just something to keep in mind. If you're a grown-up person and you have painted 4,000 points of your army and your first reaction is to look at the points and the index and say, I'm shelving my army for this edition, you should probably check your mental health at that point because that is not a regular reaction a normal person with common sense has. What you're going to try to do is, what, what can you do? You can sit down, you can go over on Reddit, you can email GW directly and give feedback. Tell them, what are your problems? What what can you do? Um, w discuss things with people. Um, get another perspective. Look at it from a different perspective. Play games. Test things out. Most of the people who said that they are shoving their army said that without e even having played a game. And I, after two games, I'm not shoving my Death Guard, but I also have a ton of other armies to play, so I'm going to give them a try as well. But I'm going to still play Death Guard uh, over the course of the next three months. And I'm going to continue giving feedback, talking about them, analyzing their data cards, uh, doing content for them. I'm not just going to ignore them now because they're seemingly bad. That That is not something a normal person would do. And then we have the fourth point from Clutter Eater, which says, the beginning of a new edition is always a wild time where nobody really knows what's going on. This is your opportunity to go discover strange combos under an overpriced units that haven't been adjusted yet and interesting strategies. Enjoy it. You can only get the experience uh, and the flood of new rules to analyze and games to play so many times in this hobby. So make the most of it. And that is a very positive mindset about the current rules and the Wild West that we have going on with points and everything. While I don't 100% agree with this one, I appreciate the positivity here and I appreciate it. Um, they are motivating people to just go out, play their army, even if they think it's bad or even if they think it's too good and test things out. Ask your friends uh, about combos, show them your codex or your index, discuss things with them, ask them to potentially build lists for you with your army, maybe even if their knowledge is limited. This is one of the best experiments I can actually tell GW, any video game testers, any testers of any kind. If you have a an expert on a single faction, and if you have an expert on, on something that is cool about their faction and their balancing and their rules and so on, give that faction to someone else who has no clue what is going on. Give them a day to read through it. Let them build a list and play that list against your friend and you, you build a list for your friend. That is incredible. It works so, so well. It gives you so much insight about the list, about the army, about list building and about understanding the army, how easy, how complicated it is. Uh, certain synergies that have maybe been overlooked, um, certain synergies that you maybe did not think about. And this is the way I would personally test a lot of Warhammer 40,000. I would give the army not only into very experienced players' hands, but also maybe still experienced players' hands, but someone who has no clue about the faction. And just have them build a list. And maybe even also play them themselves. So you have two games. You play one game with that list from someone who's not that knowledgeable about the army, and that person plays that army as well. You can get so much knowledge out of that instead of just repeatedly having a Drukari super expert who just has that one army play against a Space Marine one trick. That, that is only to give you so much information. Just something to throw out there. And last but not least, uh, Clutter Eater says that both points, pointed war gear and free war gear pricings models are introduced in places where players can identify undervalued 
units or configurations and that if you have a knack for list building you can further develop that skill no matter if your war gear is free or not and while i agree with the general sentiment you know list building can still be fun it's not super terrible in age of sigma or anything um i think that in a game and especially in a game which has a ton of kits out there that are currently being printed sold and assembled that you cannot do something like that without thinking it through and without um offering side grades without you know, offering some kind of compensation for weaker weapons and without making and adding granularity to weapons. I agree that you can still try things out, be creative with your list building, um, do a lot of stuff with your army and so on, test things around. But overall, I still will criticize GW every step of the way for what they have done uh, with most of this edition when it comes to indices and these kinds of rules, which is just simply not thinking them through. Then we have another post that I want to talk about. Did GW write themselves into a corner? Would it have been easier for people to swallow if there just wasn't war gear options and they just gave units the combi weapon treatment, aka combining weapons into a singular profile or taking options away? Example, Tomb Blades. They have three different war gear options that are now free. So of course you're going to take those options and the unit has been pointed to reflect this. So why didn't GW just take them away as options and just add them as features on their datasheet? Obviously, years of releasing units with different options that all cost different points made it a very difficult task to do, hence the title. Just curious on your thoughts. And this is exactly right. GW has pointed units like Tomb Blades and a lot of other units for the most expensive and the best loadout or the, at least the best war gear option when it comes to weapons. And Tomb Blades now are way more expensive than they were previously, and that is something I personally highly dislike. And the granularity at the 9th edition was to take the weaker weapon, but also have super cheap Tomb Blades, which are just really cool. They still did a lot of things. And now you have to pay quite a lot of points because they expect you to take Gauss Blasters or Tesla weapons. And combining them simply similar to combi weapons would have definitely not been perfect. A lot of people would be very angry. Why are you taking my options away? And so on. But for the general design of the game, that is not a bad idea. And if you're, too, if you're not interested to offer side grades, do that. Combine the weapons a little bit. Um, give us a, I don't know, a mix of a little bit of a Tesla weapon and a Gauss weapon and offer a combination of these weapons, or at least something like the current combi weapons. The current combi weapons are already stepping on a lot of people's toes. I understand that. But the idea that this person has is not bad by any means. Just something to think about. Then we have the doc document that is the 10e developer rules commentary document. This one I highly appreciate. As I said, I wish that, I hope that this one is going to be printed in a book, but I highly doubt it, to be completely honest. It's going to be updated all the time. And this one, for example, clarifies that damage can never be below uh, 1, um, even if you, you know, reduce damage by minus 1, unless that ability specifically states that it can go to de um, 0 damage, basically. And it's something I highly appreciate because the rules as it stands have not been written um, very concisely. But the fact that you need a developer rules commentary document is already telling about your system, is it not? Because you could have just written that down on the ability and clarified everything then and there. A new player having to figure out that there is a developer rules commentary document is a hoop that I personally even think is not that great to jump through. A lot of German reviewers for um, Leviathan and 10th edition have been criticizing already that they have to download additional data cards over on the Warmer community website. That I think is crap. Um, expecting people to uh, download a document is not too much to be expected. But the number of documents that is now stacking up is reaching numbers again. That is That just sucks because you have your basic rule book, you have your core rules that you could download as well, you have data cards, you have your index, and you have the 10e developer rules commentary. And soon we are going to have errata and the separate codex that is going to release in addition to GT packs, manuals, and missions and all that kind of stuff you have to keep in mind. We are already stacking documents upon documents upon documents, which is going to lead to, in the end, nothing but frustration um, especially for new players, especially players who just don't want to want to have a balanced and understandable game because the 10e developer rules are nothing that quote-unquote balances the game. They explain the rules. And that is something that should be in the core rules and not in a developer commentary uh, document. That developer commentary should be on the rules page um, as a designer's note. That's how it should have been handled. So... I'm glad it, it exists and I appreciate W releasing this and the designers, 
but I think this could have been handled better. So yeah, to round things out, we are at an hour, and this is more of a podcast style episode. I doubt I'll be bothering uh, editing this video, but 10th edition, the core rules are looking very positive. Um, they have done away with phases that have been frustrating for a lot of players. Not every army is able to cast psychic spells. Um, I think leadership and battle shock has been handled very well, and the way it works, you're not losing models anymore, but rather interesting stuff happens. We have uh, less stratagems. We have you know, somewhat more interesting basic rules. Auras have been toned down. Rerolls have been toned down. And those are all things I really, really appreciate about the new edition. And as I said, I already played two games and that is something that instantly uh, kind of jumped out uh, at me and that was very apparent that those are good changes and it makes the game work way better, way faster. And that was very fun. So uh, that is the, the core rules aspect is something I would give the 10th edition like an A- minus or so for because there are still improvements to be made. There are still clarifications needed. Um, like, for example, you know, differing toughness in a unit, differing movement in a unit, that is all not as intuitive as I was hoping. But most of the stuff in the core rules are pretty decent. The indices, most of the time, feel like they have not been tested. The indices feel like they have been written by completely independent designers that have not had to communicate with uh, someone who is looking through all those indices at the end, comparing them and uh, testing them and just saying, okay, those are roughly all, all our indices are now roughly on in a similar level, at least as far as we could test and design. Um, we are going to alter them once we have our Minotaur field manuals releasing and points changes releasing and so on. It doesn't feel like that happened. It feels literally like there was a designer who had to write three to five different indices. They wrote them. They handed them in and no one bothered to check them. And they just said, we are going to print those out and or, or put them in a PDF, call it a day. And it is something I really do not appreciate. The attention um, to detail is not there. And I do not feel like uh, the time and the effort from the player has been respected, given the rules that we've received. That is my criticism. And yeah, that is where I stand with indices. And more or less the same applies with the points changes. The points feel like they have been randomized. Um, a lot of people have said that those points changes were designed by ChatGPT, and it feels like that because there's no intent behind any of it, and there is no... It feels random. Just That, that is all there is to it. It does, doesn't feel like there was a person sitting behind those points making clear conscious decisions and saying, those points make sense. And there was no one giving feedback saying, Maybe that's a little bit too expensive. Maybe that's a little bit too cheap. It feels like this. it was kind of generated, forgotten about, and released. That is how the points feel. And yeah, that is why I'm with 10th edition. 10th uh, edition can improve. 10th edition can, can be the game we want it to be. And I'm fairly positive and fairly certain that we are going to get a fun game for casual players that can play any faction and almost any model and enjoy the game. Crusade players who are going to get baller rules for their factions, for their campaigns, with cool upgrades, fluffy things happening to your army and to your leader choices and cool things to discover. And competitive players are going to have the time of their life once the points have been adjusted a little bit, once GW has clarified the indices a little bit, or once the codex has arrived, and once you had time to figure everything out for yourself, and once things have been balanced and reiterated upon at least once. I think this is all going to happen. But GW left a lot of potential on the table for an edition which was praised and introduced as an edition that was going to be simplified, reworked, and that is going to allow them to make the adjustments they always wanted to make. That was how 10th edition was introduced. And for that to announce that, that greatly and that imp like imposing changes and now we finally have the chance to really reiterate things they left a lot of potential on the table when it comes to the general design and creativity of the armies. This is going back to indices again, but I think that we can expect and we should expect more than just you as an army generating some kind of arbitrary token to spend it on basic rules like rerolling hit rolls, looking at Drukhari here. That is boring, literally. Make something else. We have way more options. You have a ton of levers in Warhammer 40,000 and you have a ton of options to make things more interesting. That is all I'm going to say. Um, so yeah, that is that is Warhammer 40k 10th edition. I think it has a lot of potential still left in its tank. I think the game is not bad. 
but I think that the game could have been better. The excitement has been hampered by the rules, by the indices, by the points. And um, frustration is definitely not what you as a company and as um, game designers should expect and um, should have to deal with because if you sit down and, you know, see what's going on, test the things and um, respect the players and, and their time they invested in the game and in the rules, in the time they usually spend giving feedback, sending you emails, then it all would have turned out a little bit differently. So yeah, that's my opinion on 10. I'm out. <laughs>